Good morning from the Boneset Ranch. A few months ago we purchased this Tracker EV. One of the first things I did was post a video about the EV that I had bought. Mostly because when I was doing the research into the different vehicles, I had liked this vehicle from its specs, but there were very few practical videos about its performance. Um, there was a lot of dealer videos and of course the manufacturer's video, but no user videos telling you how it performs in the real world. So I set out, wanted to put out a video that talked about the performance as I saw it, bringing it home, and it's been well received as a video. And as an update, I've wanted to do things like uh, talk about how it performs after months of use and also try to push it to its limits to see what its strengths are, what its weaknesses are. And today I'm going to put the tracker to its test, probably its ultimate test, of off-road performance going up and down a steep hill on the backside of our neighborhood here on a neighborhood trail that takes us down 300 feet in elevation from up where the houses are down to where the creek is down in the valley. And that is about a third of a mile, so several trips will tell me how far the tracker can go and how well it performs uh, under continuous use. We've used the tracker to take the tools up and down the back side of the hill as we try to clear for the um, upcoming fire season. And we've used it to haul things from the barn to the driveway, from the driveway to the barn. Nice. <laughs> as we've used the tracker over these uh, short trip distances, we can go for a week or two without even thinking about plugging it in and charging it. Um, it does great for that purpose. If you own a small piece of property and you'd like to have a little vehicle that gets you around, this is definitely the vehicle for it. I'll be tracking our movements up and down the hill to get an accurate uh, distance for the battery test using an app I have. GPS waypoints here. It has a simple interface. It has some tools for seeing your change in your altitude, your distance traveled, how fast you go. And today we're going to take it out and give it that battery test I've been promising. Let's head out. I was able to superimpose the data from the app onto Google Earth. Need the key to unlock our lock. That's cool. Yeah. The arrows show where we are in relation to the map. Okay. Put your seatbelt on. Seatbelt on. See that? Safety manager. <laughs> well, rather not have you killed if you roll over. For some reason. Well, you don't have that much uh, faith in your driving skills? I, I have faith in my driving skills, it's just nice, because also mom would demand you do that, so. <laughs> Hopefully it'll make it there. <laughs> so. So my plan is to use this area as a turnaround. Okay. We're going crazy we could go down the hill over there. <laughs> Back in there somebody's mom was talking about. So what does this say for distance? Uh, 0.22 miles. 0.22, okay. So we'll subtract that from the bottom. And we'll know how long this road is that comes down here. Okay. 
I know it. It's all green down here. Yeah. It wasn't this green when I was last time here, I think. Yeah. And the end of the road. Okay, so now what are we at? Distance. Five four three. So it's point three two three. Something like that, yeah. So a third of a mile from that landing point down. Okay, let's get turned around and head back up. Okay. Should I throw this branch off the back over down here? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Check the mat branch. Okay. Put your seatbelt on. I will. and then we'll work on that end. I feel like it feels always much more fun. Yeah, yeah you feel more in control. Yeah, not... Uh, don't roll, don't roll, don't roll, don't roll. <laughs> you can't find me. get goats on all this. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing the fencing for that. You can do that. I thought you get to play Shepherd. Shepherd using the UTV? <laughs> yeah. That's your guys' thing. I don't like the goat. I don't like the goat that much. Hey, look, your branches. Could you bring your phone? Yeah. That's good. Right. So we can communicate. If we need okay, see what it's like to try to make a big turnaround here. Ah, a piece of cake. Okay, stop here a moment. So at the end of it all, we continued on up and down the hill another seven times from the first trip we took. We made it 5.12 something or other miles, which was um, about what I had predicted. The tricky part was at the end, the battery crashed hard. From the bottom of the hill, it was already struggling pulling us both up the hill. I ended up getting out and walking behind it as uh, Chad continued to drive the tracker up the hill and after a while it kind of died for him and so we switched. After we switched I made it not much further. He pushed a little ways more until we hit that waypoint where we were turning around on the upper part of the hill and at that point the battery was dead. It wasn't going to take us any further up and it wasn't going to take itself up so I had to go and get a tractor and pull it out. What we learned was the, the battery gauge is playing to the battery's strength and the battery's strength dives off quickly after the halfway point. Once it hits that halfway point, that's the point where if you're somewhere down a hill 
and hopefully close enough by it's time to get back to wherever it is you need to charge. Our heavy crashing started at, at, at a quarter of a charge and the quarter of a charge did not last nearly as long as a quarter of a charge lasts when it's above the halfway point. The rate of dissipation, especially on a hill when the batteries are crashing is much quicker at the end. So what is a quarter of a charge to you at the first half of the charge, um, total half of the charge, is a longer run time than you're going to get from that last quarter. We were stressing it to make it get to that point. I mean, it was what I had set out to do to find out what the tipping point was. What does that mean for people who are considering buying this? Uh, again, if you own a small piece of property like mine, you know, mine is just shy of 11 acres. You know, if you have 20 acres or less and, and you're looking for a quiet, reliable tool to move yourself about your property or help you move things around, or if you live in one of those neighborhoods where you want to be able to zip yourself down to the beach or to the river or to some amenity in the neighborhood and you just want something to get around in that has a little more capability than just your standard golf cart, this is, the, this is definitely the ride. If you're looking for a 30 mile trail ride, I don't know if you can get anywhere near that on a flat, flatter open road. I would not be buying this if you're looking for a straight out replacement of a gas uh, side by side. There, the distances are your biggest difference. Um, and if you're a speed demon who wants to go 40, 50 miles an hour, you know, that, that's another reason. But if you're like me, want to drive just around your property or close by, this is definitely a good vehicle to consider. After that battery was dissipated to its minimum, it took on 240 volts at least five hours for that battery to charge back up. Which means if you're thinking I'm going to take this with me on a, on a remote trip and use the generator to recharge it in the evening, you, you can do it. It'll probably take a little longer than the um, five hours that I got out of shore power. If you're going to consider using this from a base camp at a, at a campground that has electricity service, you, you should know what kind of service they're going to have and have a uh, adapter as you need it to make your charger work. I'm going to show you another advantage to this vehicle. California wants to register these kinds of vehicles. We're just that kind of state. And when it's registered, it's not street legal, but it's trail legal for um, state parks and national forest trails. In California, however, um, there are some trails that are off limits to gas emissions uh, vehicles and they only allow bicycles on the trails or electric vehicles. And so I've got this, this sticker, the green emission sticker, which means anywhere that bicycles and other wheeled vehicles are allowed but gasoline vehicles are not allowed this thing can go. So. Our next test will be on flatter roads. We're going to find out how it goes on flatter terrain. Thanks for watching.